What is up, my friends? Welcome to another caster class. Today we're taking a look at a couple of new casters. We've got Chipmunks and Awa on the call with us. And uh, we're going to be taking a look at a clean feed practice that they did. See what we can do to level up their game. and Maybe we'll all learn something along the way. Uh, Y'all there? Chipmunks, why don't you start? Say hello. Very nice, very nice. Well, I mean, that's we both started in CGL. I mean, definitely get some exposure through that to get some good practice. Awa, how about yourself? Well, played in, or I casted in the OPA, and uh, I wanted to do more casting in CGL and maybe up oh, my game. Very nice. And as my producer skills are amazing as always, Chipmunk, I had you muted. Why don't you go ahead and uh, do that intro one more time? All right. <laughs> well, um, take two. Take two. I am Chipmunk. Uh, <laughs> chipmunk or Chipmunks doesn't really matter to me. Uh, I was a caster for the OPA. I founded the casting division in that small league. Uh, although it's now changed its name and because mods went crazy. Uh, you know how it is. Uh, and I found out the casting division there. I became the head caster. Uh, and Awa, I'm a play-by-play -play caster, and Awa is my uh, my co-caster, my color caster, whatever you want to call it. Good buds. Very nice. Very nice. Uh, we do have Billy here as well. I don't know if he's piped up just yet, but, you know. I kind of have. I fell asleep. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Uh, yeah, we we, uh, we had a couple of matches earlier today, so. Ooh, boy, did we. How it feels. Boy, did we have some matches today. Nice. Yeah, I know how you feel, man. I had to cast. I was talking to Fullstone just before the stream about how I, one day I casted three games and I was out, so I'm so excited to really get some nice exposure. Yeah, no, it was actually why I, I skipped last week. Uh, did eight matches over the weekend and my brain was just fried come monday she does oh, more than that it was 10 it was 10 it was 10 and yeah so I, I didn't think i'd have you know anything intelligent to be able to share for a caster class my brain just needed a bit of a reset so i took last week off but we're back we're here to you know we're all here to learn something let's uh let's just delve right into this thing no point in wasting any time uh, Mind you, we are tired when we when we did this. It was early in the morning. <laughs> I was, that is uh, <laughs> cast do good in stream. Yes, sir. Thank you, Airborne. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Uh, and I mean, hey, no worries. Uh, there's there's still some fundamentals you know that we can go over. Um, yeah, we'll just get right. In. You want to start at the beginning, or did uh, you have yeah, a particular sure. map that you wanted us to look at? I mean, honestly, let's just go through the the five maps. You know, it's about two hours. You're you're left. you're on crack. If yeah. we're going to do five maps, okay. yeah. True, true, true. You know, let's let's pick one map and and go from there. We could possibly do two, depending on how much time we have. But I mean, these can take yeah, a while. Map, so first map was kind of a roll. So, uh, you're let's go Temple of Anubis because that one was pretty close. It had some nice storyline bits. But just for context, on Busan, uh. I believe the Valiant wipes the floor with the Defiant. Yeah, it Just happens. Beat them 2 0, oh, like almost 100 to 0 both rounds. Right. But yeah, let's get into it. All right, so we'll start on Anubis. This is the, the second map that y'all did. Is there anything you're looking to work on? Is there anything that you feel. Well, like you struggle with a little bit or you're you're hoping to gain from from today's class i don't necessarily have crutch words as much as i do words that in the moment i repeat right i mean so that's like, kind of one in the same true 
But, like, I'll use them one fight, and then the rest of the cast, like, I won't use those words at all. But I'll just, like, just, like, just full stack them all into one fight, and I need to add variety. Uh, so, yeah. But I also do have crutch words. I have both, you know? And one of them is definitely the wor the words going down. I right. need to come out with a, a different w PG way to say, uh, you know, getting killed, getting eliminated, you know? I mean, and sometimes it's just a matter of just write down a few, you yeah. know, I mean, ju just have a notepad. I mean, I've got a list of, of crutch words of my own and next to those, you can write out alternatives and just seeing it written down on paper will help. And, right. and you can kind of at the very least cycle through some crutch words, but then you'll learn to eliminate it entirely. Okay. All right. That's good. That's good. All right. Let's get it. Uh, wait, let's... hold on. Does Awa have anything you want to work on? Uh, I just think. I just need to, like, think about stuff, like, really before I say it. Because sometimes I'll, like, have an idea, and then I'll start talking, and then I'll just, like, forget what I'm saying. Same. So here. that happens, like, on a couple of maps. I have to just, like, uh, make sure, like, I know what I'm saying. Okay. It's the importance okay. of having a notepad with you when you're casting is you can scribble down a few quick notes while you're going along it's invaluable to me. I have a notepad with me every time that I cast, so I write down something that something that caught my eye, especially as a color caster. Um, I, I want to bring out the story. I want to drive the story home. And that's up to you and your partner that you're casting with for the day to come up with and figure out what your storyline is going to be. What, yeah. are, what are you going to bring to the, what are you going to bring to the cast? Prep okay. can help a lot with that. Got it. Just getting together beforehand and, and going over uh, important important aspects of the cast or things you want to focus on, uh, be it a style of play or a particular player. But yeah, prep, can... prep can definitely help with that. Yeah. All right. Let's hop into it. Sounds like a plan. Let's, let's get her started. I mean, it's get a scan legend. If it's scan god, let's see what he can do on the Widowmaker. Shax really did pull his weight on yeah, the I'm gonna back that out a little on. bit. After that win, there we go from the Valiant on Busan. What do you think we can see from them here on Temple of Anubis? Valiant, they they got KSP on the Widow. Another, I mean, it's a hit scan legend, a hit scan god. Let's see what he can do on the Widowmaker. Shax really did pull his weight on the Echo. We're gonna see Dreamer switch off of the ball and go on to the Winston's. It's a little bit more divey map on Temple, especially on this first point. And Defiant really kind of playing the same same composition, but they switched up. I think it's... I mean, the Defiant have so many veterans. Three of the players on their starting roster have been in the league since its inception. But this Valiant team, a little bit less, you know, high regards for them. You know, there are a lot of new players on that squad. But KSP has really, I think yeah. he's even a contender for Rookie of the Year. He's been performing quite well here for the Valiant yeah, yeah, he's done really good. He's really brought this team into it. Now, Let's though. See. Okay, in, in the beginning, uh, I would try to establish the the problem, namely the defense, and then what the attackers are looking to do to break through that defense. So set up the story for the viewers. I mean, it's, it's good to highlight the players a bit, um, but do it in the context of that map and what they're trying to accomplish in in that scenario so if you want to talk about ksp's widow what is he going to do and what is he looking for to start this fight why did he pick Widowmaker? and what would what are you looking for from a caster point of view you know are they going to get on top of the arches and and try to pick off one of the supports i mean they're going to what are their problems they're going to be trying to snipe through double shield so that's going to create some issues for for a sniper Set these things up and, and utilize that time, that 45 seconds in the beginning, to set the stage. Yeah, I, I got my, actually, like, my, my things flip-flopped. I, I heard that, but I am worried about that. That's something you already know. Yeah. I actually, I believe coming up here, what he gets up on the uh, little area above the corner, and I believe I say KSP on the Widow will have the one-shots on the logics. At, at some point this map. Maybe that was just me. But, yeah, for the some uh, Dreamer looking for the die, but it's a knife boop there. Now, yeah. it, they're looking for uh, picks, though. 
the immortality field will go down, or once again, the lamp is it's affectionately called. Will come out. Yeah, now Logix is in trouble, but he manages to get the healing. The Winston Cleave is absolutely massive right now, uh, and it's just getting so many picks because of it. The damage over time is just going to collapse onto the Defiant, and they will be taken down. And yep. the Valiant will take this. That's really hard. Good timing on that. That's a, that was a great place to hand off. Uh, I will say, be careful interrupting. It can, it can add a lot, but you don't want to muddle the noise there. So, uh, to to interject like mid sentence over your play by play, just just be very careful on when you do that. Okay. But especially when you have the widow on the top with the crossfire, and you have the monkey jumping in. It's gonna be really hard for Defiant to sustain that. Little high ground that you have at the beginning. Now they do have the opportunity here for a snowball. Dreamer just needs to get a little bit more cleave damage, and they will have three ults to the Defiant's measly one, maybe two. Uh, although those are both support ults, and we have seen how much those have had impact this game. KSP may be in trouble getting pressured by Nevix, but that's not going to matter because there's a duplicate online. It's Shax on the Reinhardt like we've seen so many times already this game. He already has the Shatter. He says, sit down. Now he's looking for Beast on the Reinhardt, but he may be in trouble. There's two people on him. He'll be forced out of duplicate. That doesn't mean he'll be dead. He takes down Beast. Now it's the Valiant's time for them to cap the point. Kareev is going to be just down in an instant here, and what a fast cap from the Valiant. All right, I liked the setup. Um, let's go back through that fight one more time. Uh, I would, I would have liked to hear Awa start talking about the the ults. Uh, that that really is part of the color's job. Don't don't be afraid to to be assertive. Uh, don't don't be afraid to be whatever point you want to make. Say it say it with confidence. And and don't. Uh, what's the best way to put this? Don't second guess yourself in the moment. In the moment, you're you're the best caster on the planet, and what you want to talk about is very important for the listener. And, and we're all ears. You're the authority on the case. And uh, you know, I hear a little bit of hesitation, and and that's you know could just be getting used to it. I mean, it could be being tired. Yeah, it was 8 a.m. for him. <laughs> right. But try try to stay assertive and, and stay the authority. And when you when you're start talking about the snowball, I love that. Like, that's that's crucial. I mean, you clearly been paying attention. Like, focus on the next fight, especially on assault. Once the first point gets capped, I mean, what happened it isn't nearly as important as what's about to happen. And the ability to, to snowball ultimates into a second fight win, which is exactly what we saw... That's that's where the focus should be on assault. So here, let's see, once we back up, so this this throw is great. There, just keep now talking. They do have the opportunity here for us. So that's right. There is still color space, and as the color caster, this is this is your time to set up the next fight. Oh yeah, and, and it was good to mention the three to one ults. But you could plus that even further by by picking the most important of those ults and what they're looking to do with them. So as opposed to just listing the number of ultimates, talk about specific ults and what you expect to see. You could pick out, you know, just the duplicate and, and say, you know, talk about, you know, Shax has duplicated the Reinhardt before, looking to do that again to start this fight could open things up. So you could you could get even more specific. But uh, absolutely on the right track. Uh, I'm liking what I'm hearing so far, for sure. Oh, yeah. Snowball Dreamer just needs to get a little bit more cleave damage, and they will have three ults to the Defiant's oh. measly one. Yeah, well, don't don't be afraid to take your space. Uh, this is this is all color time. Maybe two. Uh, although those are both support ults, and we have seen how much those have had impact this game. KSP. 
And see, there, like, when you came in with the, the KSP line, that's probably that's probably about when the play-by-play should have started. Shax is starting to engage, and this fight's about to break out. That's about where the play-by-play should come in. I feel like yeah. I may have stole some of his time there. You did. You did. It's okay, yeah. though. I think it's like uh, when, we, when we cast more, we'll get a better, like, synergy. And, like, uh, yeah. usually I'm just, like, but I think I understand, like, more of the color caster role of, like, you're explaining what happened in a fight and you're like setting up the fight and then your play by play caster will like do the fight. So I, I think it's just, I, I understand it more. And, uh, Corbeck, by the way, welcome Corbeck makes a good point in our chat there. They're just talking about the ult is always a good fallback. Like if you're, if you're looking for something to talk about, focus on the ultimates, focus on what ultimates are coming online and how they can have a big impact. So if you're ever, if you ever wondering, man, what, what do I say here? Prepping the fight and looking at the ultimates is a great fallback. It's a very good point. You best remember you're the master of why things are happening. Yes. Put Get yourself a sticky note or something like that and put it on it. I am the master of why. Especially as a color caster. Uh, when I first started doing this really seriously, it was... I wanted to explain it as if somebody had never seen Overwatch before in their lives. Um, and now my audience has gotten a lot more sharp as to what is going on. But the more you practice, the more you're going to get more relaxed and comfortable. I'd, I'd say cast anything you can uh, together, whether or not you're on a stream or not. I mean, you guys could just sit and you know mute a live game and cast it. There's so much Overwatch on Twitch that you could find and just mute it and just cast it yourselves. I did that um, every day with the Grand Finals in the uh, yeah. Overwatch Discord. Yep. Yeah. So, especially for a color caster, I'll, uh, you've got to really put your foot down and, and make sure that your time, because your time is split about 70-30, play-by-play to color. So the words that you ha- that you do get out have to have the impact. Um, and what I've heard come out of you has been actually quite good. Just don't second-guess yourself. You're never wrong. Yeah, that was something that... Yeah, That's something that we were taught. We, you're never wrong. Even you if can you're always wrong, walk you're it not back. Wrong. Yep. You can always walk it back and say, "Well, holy cow, I did not see that coming." And I mean, it was great that he did blah 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 blah. But your initial you point is correct. Regret. The more, the, the more you practice, the more the synergy will grow. Yep. Maybe yeah. in trouble right. getting pressured by Nevix, but that's not yeah. going to matter because there's a duplicate online. It's Shax on the Reinhardt like we've seen so many times already this game. He already has the Shatter. He says, sit down. Now he's looking for Beast on the Reinhardt, but he may be in trouble. There's two people on him. He'll be forced out of duplicate. That doesn't mean he'll be dead. He takes down Beast. Now it's the Valiant's time for them to cap the point. Kareev is going to be just down in an instant here. And what a fast cap from the Valiant. They did a really good job of playing to their advantage. They know that they're going to have ults and they're going to have the duplication up before the, uh, Defiant have really anything to counter it. So they're going to kind of go in fast looking for that quick pick, but if they don't get it, they can just pop duplication. Like, they did easily win that map, on a, on a, especially on point B, where it's super difficult for teams to break a defense. Nice. Yeah, for sure. Well, that whole squad really showing up, but Shax, uh, he's actually the only person, I believe, on this squad who's actually played, at least on the starting roster, who's played a season of Overwatch League before. He was on the, the Valiant last season, had the first ever sextuple kill in Overwatch League history, which was on a Reaper Death Blossom. Uh, that was back when the team wore green, but now in their new threads, they're showing up and showing out. So now, like it, love it. Uh, now it's time uh, to start uh, setting uh, up the next defense. Yeah. Fine. Maybe looking for the ball pick here, which would be a little interesting. Uh, just right out of the gate, just focus on the defense at this stage. Because you, you want to establish what the attackers are running into and how they can dismantle it or... You know, what problems they may face not to mention the compositions can change on your offense yeah and be. and they will yeah and then they will just throw up whatever and then make swaps at the final second so before attacker gates open 
uh, talk about the defense. You can talk about their composition and how they're setting up. And then once the gates o do actually open, you have, you know, it, a solid 10, 15 seconds of leeway before the fight's going to break out where you can flip over, start talking about the offensive composition and what they're looking to accomplish before the fight breaks out and you can hand it to the play-by-play. -play. Oh, yeah. And Valley is picking to the Dreamer on the Winston and KSB switching there you go. That's good. the Widow onto that match. Maybe a little bit more defensive, a little bit more uh, flexible. Personally, I, I wonder... Do, do, when Echo comes on this map, does, does she have, like, an identity crisis with the fact that there's, like, Echo, like, uh, like, frames on the, uh, on the high ground on Anubis? <laughs> like, I feel like you just have an immense identity crisis. <laughs> but either way, now the cleave damage, oh my lord, that is a lot of cleave damage for Dreamer. He already has 47% on the... Just a small note. Uh, always laugh at your co-casters' jokes. Like you're in yeah. it together. Um, e even if it's stupid. Like, and you can get, depends on how much you work together and how comfortable you are with each other. But you can you can even you know, say something like, I don't know about that one. You, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, but d make sure and have some interaction with it so it doesn't fall flat. Yeah. Because, I mean, it was it was clear that, that you know, Chipmunk was going for a joke about the statues and, and didn't quite articulate it perhaps nope. as well as you could. Uh, but that's when, you know, Colorcaster or, I mean, just your co-caster in general can, can come in and and maybe flesh out the joke a little bit more or, or say, you know, or, or just brush it off. But um, acknowledge it in some point, you know, and pretty much always, always laugh at your co-caster's jokes because you are in it together. Yeah. Primal Rage, that even though not getting any kills is absolutely huge for the Valiant, already getting a massive ult advantage. Logic's gonna stay on the low ground, but that may be a mistake. There's a Winston right there, and he's just gonna get more to the ult charge. Already at 60% on the freaking Primal Rage. That is absolutely unheard of. Dreamer going nuts already. Agility is looking for picks, looking for any damage, frankly. He has 20%, now 30, on the duplication. Which Dreamer dwarfs, but there's a pick for Agility's. KSP also going down. Now it's time for the Defiant Dreamer to try to win this. But Dreamer with the pick onto Agility's. Now he has the Primal Rage already! That is ridiculous! Look at the ult charge for the Valiant compared to the Defiant, and it looks like they're going to take this fight off the fact that Dreamer had the best cleave. That will be on in my sights later this week. Alright, a couple things. Um, stuck on the, the Primal Rage thing a little too long. Like, uh, it was a great point to make, but there was other important things going on in the fight. Um, yeah, I realize now I completely missed the window charging way faster than the uh, the primal. Right. Don't get too focused in on one thing. I mean, just like in game, you know, try to keep your your eyes bouncing around the screen and, and don't get too honed in on one thing. It was an important fact, but there were other things to talk about, and there are ways that you could even even elaborate on it more as opposed to just saying, well, you know, he's got it fast, but why is that important? What is he going to do with it? Uh, also the, oh, what were you said? Like that was a great rock. That was a, the perfect way to kind of interrupt your play by play. Like that was where it adds hype and it, it and it's just, you're picking out with, you know, one of the, some of the minutia, some of the micro gameplay. That was a really nice, just little touch in of, yeah, that was a great rock. Like, that's, that's how you do that. That was really good. And I was talking about earlier, you know, the interrupting you got to be careful with. That was an example of doing it well. Uh, I don't know. It's like, you know how, like, in Zoom, like, if two people talk at the same time, it kind of, like, cuts out both people. Right. So it's like, um, like we were doing this through Discord, so I, I'm figuring, like, the same thing's happening. Because, like, sometimes, like, when we both talk, like, uh, both of us will, like, cut out. So, like... Should I just be like, if something comes up, should I just like kind of like, not like, but like interrupt him almost so I can get what to say and not 
not get to the point where it's like both of us cutting out you shouldn't cut out um yeah. that might be a thing with if you have the the auto clipping on i would make sure and turn that off in discord so if you go to your settings and go to voice and video input sensitivity make sure that's not on auto and i would turn that i have mine at like negative 65 db and, and that'll that should prevent the any clipping of your voice but otherwise it shouldn't cut out uh you really want to be more focused on you you can interject something and make sure you're heard but without taking away from your play-by-play to where it's in addition to what they're what they're saying so it's building the hype of the fight that's really what i'd be focused on with the interrupt make sure you're not detracting from what your play by play is saying but that you're building the hype of that match or that fight all right we'll point out that rain was on mayhem season two. Oh, really ocean would know ocean's a freaking encyclopedia of this stuff uh, it's ridiculous. All right. Well, you got me there, Ocean. <laughs> probably sitting on the bench, to be fair. I didn't see him a single time watching the Mayhem last year, so probably anyone watching wouldn't even know except Ocean because he's a freaking encyclopedia. Truth. All right, let's keep going. Really building up the final ridge, and that's going to be that mini fight right there that's going to save him. Anymore. He's going to get the. F he's going to get it so fast now that he's nano, but no. He's going to get taken down. The nano goes to waste. We've seen so many great plays from him today. Stacks duplicating the Zenyatta. An odd pick there, not finding the transcendence that he was hoping for. Would have been really conditional. They could have just saved their ults until he turned back into Echo. A uh, little bit confusing there. Right now they're going to try to cap. Kareev has the transcendence in case they try to pull a, tr a, uh, a flux on them. Dreamer trying to get a pick. Now he's on the Hammond as well. So there are two wrecking balls. No, there weren't. There were two wrecking balls. Now Beast has swapped over to the Rhine. Uh, that was last round. Oh my God! Now they're looking for picks. Agility's. All right, clearly you got fight, lost in the fight a little bit there. Um, try to focus with what's on your screen. Right. And I would, I would also say focus on the attackers more than the defenders, just generally across the board. Because the attackers are the ones taking the action to try to make something happen. And as ob observers, you're, you're taught to follow the attacking team a little bit more. So, I mean, even if just focusing on, I mean, the camera was on logics, sitting on that center platform, trying to open things up with the, with the ash. Even just focusing on that and what they're aiming at, what they're trying to do. Now, I loved the part where you're talking about Kareev has the transcendence to counter McGravy's gravitic flux. That was nice. But past you know, past little things like that, and, and again, especially if it's starting to feel a little overwhelming, just focus with what's going on on screen. All right. Transforming into the Sigma, but he's not going to find the Flux. Oh, that's brutal. He actually did find it, but he just couldn't get it off in time. Now, Lastro, though... Is the beeping in the VOD? Beeping. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 is, somebody's, is somebody's Discord blowing up right now? <laughs> yeah. I can hear it, too. I can hear it with the VOD paused. Yeah, it's, uh, turn your streamer mode on. It'll stop all the sounds coming in. And all definitely right. do that when you're casting. Turn I'll on streamer mode it. when you're casting. So any... I would also make sure like your Windows notifications are turned off. I leave both Very of those good. things off at all times. But that way you don't get any additional noises popping in because it can just be distracted. Wait, how do you turn on streamer mode on? Like, I'm not really... No, no, it's fine. It's, it's a good question. Go into user settings in Discord. So just the gear in the bottom left-hand corner. And you'll have streamer mode is your third option from the bottom. Yeah. And yeah, the top very top thing. option, just turn that on, and it'll keep the, the noises from coming through if you get pinged. Already. Going low in the back line. Can Agilities find him? The fuel from the tanks are amazing now. The picks in the favor of the Valiant still, but Kareev just kicking Lastro straight in the noggin. 
KSP got a pick onto Agilities. The Flux coming in. Nevix finds two. That is massive for the former San Francisco Shock star. Cruz getting the pick on the Sharks, and that will be a point capture for the Defiant. Yeah. Very nice. Very nice. It started off, that fight started off a little rough, but you turned it around in the end there, Chipmunks. That, that, that was really good. That was really it's good. The ocean, I remember the bench warmers, huh? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, this one's a slively one, isn't he, Ocean? <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's just, Corbett's making a comment about the upside, downside of a lead feed. Easier to follow one person's actions, but can also lose, uh, lose track of the overall fight. It's true. It's true. Uh, and uh, Lightning1104 coming through with the host. Thank you very much. Whoop, whoop. I'm getting a lot of compliments in chat, you two, so. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> now, very. He does, very yeah. He, sorry. He does remind me of Basic. That was one of the first things, Ocean, that I thought when I, when I saw his, when I first saw his work, I'm like, oh my God, he sounds like Alan. <laughs> that's a compliment, Chimog. Don't worry. Uh, oh, yes, it's a massive compliment. Yeah, that's yeah, a compliment. My, I, I always joke that my OWL, like when I get really freaking, like when it's going to five maps, three rounds, you know, I I freaking sound like Uber, just going absolutely nuts. Like, well, now I will say, if you noticed, Uber has slowed down a lot since season one. True. Right. So in season one, you were getting the Rap God memes, where they literally put <laughs> the song Rap God behind his casting, but. <laughs> You don't get that anymore. Uber has has grown and refined his own skill. I mean, as amazing a caster as he is, uh, I mean, and absolutely one of the best in esports, he has still continued to grow and polish his casting. And part of that is slowing down a little bit because you want it to be clear and you want it to have room to grow. If and I didn't honestly didn't even think we'd get this detailed. Um, you definitely have a lot of maturity to your cast, but allow room for hype to come in later. So you, you don't have to, you want to have an arc to where as you get further into the series, you, the hype builds. So you don't want to have the same energy level on map two that you're going to have on map five. Save yeah. your, save yourself some room to, to take it to another level. Yeah. That's an issue. I do that in some casts where, I don't know. I'll wake up. I'll have my cup of tea, and that cup of tea is really freaking strong or something. <laughs> and I'll be like, "Oh my gosh, guys! It's map one, and this team just won, won the first round." <laughs> right? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> like that's control maps. I, I always just try to get in the rhythm, uh, um, as well, you know, as as learning the teams that you're casting. And but it, it gives you a chance to just start off chill, and, and you know, I mean, just like first fight of the, you know, you don't want to get super high for the very first fight of the yeah. entire match, like the, suddenly. You You've peaked, and like you still have another hour and a half of match left to go. You know, yeah. <laughs> so I'll, I'll find myself like tired, like by by like map five right. because of the fact that I've used up all my energy. You know, right? Save uh, some, you, save some of that. I mean, most well, like, do you remember the PS4 final that we did with Spacey? That two minute. Was well, that the one where you had like 18 pounds of caffeine? Or are you talking about Spacey's 18 pounds of caffeine? Spacey's 18 pounds of caffeine. I couldn't get an ed word in edgewise because he was just so <laughs> amped. Uh, well, I, it's, guess... I love the enthusiasm. Like, it's great. Yes. That, no, that, I that love kind it. of passion is infectious and, and cool. will set you apart. So not, I'm not saying to lose the passion at all. Just leave yourself some room to go. Yeah. And, and uh, like, I feel it's like... It's like waves know. in an ocean, man. Yeah. You got and, some and, highs and lows. In this one, I artificially ended up not being as hype as usual because of the fact that I was tired. Right. So, like, like this, I may have been a little bit more high energy, but so I need to dial that down. And I already am kind of higher energy in this, so. <laughs> uh, yeah, and I mean, it's just, it's not necessarily dialing it down across the board. It's just taking it incrementally, you know, just take mm -hmm. it in steps. All right. Yeah. Let's keep it going. Just defiant. Picking up in that scrappy fight, Nevix picking up two, then get them that point A. Let's see what they can do at point B. Oh, so much room, so much room for you to talk there. Yes. So yes. much room. <laughs> you want to elaborate on that, Billy? Uh, yeah. So I mean, if you if we're looking at what we're seeing right now on the screen, um, 
you know, Beast has Shatter available. That's pretty much all you got. Cruise is coming up on EMP. Uh, with the Valiant, it's they got Matrix, do-do. but yes. <laughs> Whatever. I'm t- I'm tired. I, I, I literally just woke up like 20 minutes ago. Um, but literally nothing online for the Valiant. The closest that they've got is Lastro. That is a big picking point right there because the Ad Matrix is going to get uh, other people their ult a lot faster. And, and I'll ask you straight up. So Beast has a Shatter. That can be fight winning, yes? What do yeah. Valiant have to counter it? Oh, nothing but they're coming up on that now. No, I mean, that's not, spicy. okay, so that's not necessarily true. Now, ult-wise, correct. So, I mean, and you could even say that. They don't have any big ults to counter this, so if that's the case, what would it take to defend against this shatter? Um, a grave, you would have to block it, Boom. or... Yes, sir. So, yep. when, yeah. if you, when you set that up, if you come into this fight saying, Beast Shatter could be fight winning right here. This could get them an equally massive time bank. McCravey is going to have to have a perfect block with his shield if Valiant want to stay alive in this fight. And that yeah. just right there, you have set up what the viewer is going to be looking for going into the fight. And not only that, your play-by-play then has something to cast off of the play-by-play should ideally be focused on that once the fight breaks out did the shatter get used did it get blocked did it make it through and flatten five people and there's no follow-up any way you slice it it gives a focus to the cast and everybody is then looking for those two things yeah and that interaction those interactions in general happen all the time and those kind of interactions are or what you should be looking at to set up fights, and it can go to it can go oh, to yeah. ultimates. I mean, it can come down to you know the, the big one right now is EMP to sound barrier. I feel like I'm repeat I repeat it every match. It gets repeated, but it's <laughs> it's like that the Lucio cannot get hacked. They've got to be able to get the sound barrier out, and the sound barrier has to come out second. Otherwise, the EMP will just strip all those shields. But it's setting up the stakes, and so the viewers is watching that Lucio. Does the Lucio is the hiding? Where's that positioning? So, I mean, there's a lot of interactions between the 32 heroes in Overwatch. Uh, and pointing out one or two will direct the viewer and will also guide your play-by-play caster. And on the topic of ultimates, I'm so glad I watched all the caster classes. Because I would have already called, you know, I already would have said lift and window so many <laughs> times and lamp. And this one of the things, like, the only thing I did well because I was tired in this cast is I, I remember before I said lift, before I said lamp, before I said window, I, I said the original name. So you did. Thank, prop, thank you on that. Yeah. No, good. Well mm-hmm. done. Well done. I noticed it with the immortality field on um, point A. I caught that, and that was that was very well done. Yes, it's exactly how you should be doing it. Now, with the shatter, uh, not many ults that he can combo it with, although there is the bob online. And if agility charges up his ult like Dreamer was... Well, <laughs> then this may may as well be a point to capture, but that is very hard to do, especially on an Echo pick. Now, I, I would add, wouldn't the Ant Matrix provide some good follow up? If you sure. got everybody shattered and your your Ash is sitting in the back with the Sigma doing double damage, that can be a devastating way to follow up on a yeah. shatter. So in this it, match, apparently, I just don't know that Cruz exists. Like, I've, passed <laughs> I, I've passed off on his ultimate twice. When, when it was just Dreamer earlier and now, like, I, I just honestly, like, I mean, I remember watching Cruz, like, in UK finals when they, I mean, World Cup when they beat USA, and after that match, I was like, oh my gosh, Cruz and like, a, an Overwatch League talent, and like, the next, you know, next year, one year later, he's on the Defiant, and I'm forgetting he exists, so, I mean, uh. <laughs> but just something to keep in mind, they're, they're, are almost always ways to follow up or to defend, even if they don't have ultimates. And picking out, you know, those cooldowns, the you know, the positioning to make that happen will elevate your cast even more. Now they are going to be pushing on the left side. I mean, that anti-nade was massive. Yeah. Lastro yeah. landed a huge bio nade, and it forced oh. out immortality field. This is I did huge. Not see that. This is Apologies. huge because immortality field takes twenty five seconds to regen, right? Sorry, 
I no, no, nothing to apologize for. <laughs> nothing. No, 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 no. Don't, don't apologize. Um, Can you rewind that? Hold on a second. I need to see that yep. again. <laughs> you bet. I'm like, wait, wait. There was a bionate. Oh okay. yeah. Look at it right there. Oh, oh, four of them there. Uh, Threw oh, it in over that. the shield. That yeah. is oh, that was, a, that was over a, the shield. That was that a massive bionade. Yeah. Lastro yeah. was sitting at about uh, before that nade came in. Oh, I guess they, he had gotten more. Yeah, he was pretty close. He he was yeah. laying down some fire, and that definitely got the nano online. But no, that bionade was huge. The dude, especially on it. And that's I mean that's a way to defend. Don't un don't underestimate an Ana. <laughs> now they are going to be pushing on the left side. But it's but the getting it's the getting IF out oh, that's important speaking there. Cleave, speaking of Dreamer, right right about now he should be starting to get some cleave. No, no, he's gonna move back up onto the point. The shatter online for Beast, the lack of shields um is going to be a hindrance to him. They nano the Winston again, it's deja vu. He can't find any picks. And now it looks like it may be collapsing just like it did on point A for the Defiant the Valiant. Right there. <laughs> uh, I'm not. I'm not worried about that. That, that happens. It um, happens. I, I was going to say you could have. You could have let Awa talk. Just. I mean, just like a sentence right there. All right. So when Dreamer decided to disengage and just rotate back to the point, uh, you could have just left it open for a second, and that would have given the your color caster. I would have given Awa a chance just to throw a sentence in. Um, I mean, and shoot the fact that they don't have an immortality field would have been a wonderful thing to point out. Um, but Or whatever else going into that fight. You know, Kareev now has Transcendence Online to help push in. And, like, it's just one sentence. And that'll give you a chance to kind of catch your breath as the play-by-play -play and refocus. So don't don't feel like you have to talk over the whole thing. That There would have been a good chance to kind right. of breathe a little bit. That's something that took me forever to learn. I, I used to mic hog so much. Uh, I mean, that's an emotion building will attest to that. Uh, I, I do a lot of solo casting in my defense, all right? So, uh, but that would have been a place where you can kind of let it breathe for a second. The and dreamer going down, your main I also tank. cast it with a lot of people who, who were like, I mean, if you guys need a caster, I'll do it, but I'm pretty shy. And I'm like, oh, you can just cast color. So often I find myself, you know, like with dead zones. And I'm like, oh, crap, I need to feel... I need to fill the air because no one is talking because sometimes, not Awa, but like other folks I would cast. I know what you mean. Sometimes like leave dead air. And so sometimes I feel an unneeded urgency to like fill the air with words, even though uh, Awa, Awa's good about that. <laughs> so let's start, we'll start from where they enter the cave. Pushing on the left side, but they're going to be collapsed on. Oh, speaking of Cleave, speaking of Dreamer, right Right about now, he should be starting to get some cleave. No, no, he's going to move back up onto the point. Right there. You can just just let that go. Color come in with one sentence. Beast, or even just say, you're looking for that shatter. Because this fight didn't quite break out until him. about now. The nano, the Winston again, it's deja vu. He can't find any picks. And now it looks like it may be collapsing just like it did on point A for the Defiant, the Valiant. With Dreamer going down, your main tank is lost, and now this is going to be a push in for the Defiant. But here comes Shax. He has already made a shatter on the Echo, but he doesn't find any picks with it. KSP getting a pick with the Bob, but the Bob getting taken down right after that. Logic's getting a pick with his very own Bob. Now the picks are rolling in for the defiant this is looking like a point capture kareev getting rain shacks though getting kareev it isn't over agilities though oh I said those there so it many goes times. shacks the defiant the stall troops are coming in but don't feel like you have to call every kill in fact it's better yeah. if you don't that's a bad habit of mine it, i mean it, it's it's an easy fallback um I mean, either you're just reading the kill feed or uh, what we've heard to refer to as listing. So <laughs> our mentor <laughs> called listing. And I mean, it's it's not bad. I mean, it's not the it's not the worst thing ever, but. I think it will help kind of slow down the thought process a little bit and, and keep it more focused. You don't always have to call every kill. You can just focus on what you want to focus on on the point or, or on a single player or a single objective. And a way to get away from the word um, picks, talk about the value that you're, the hero is getting. 
Oh man, I, I mean, he, he's nanoed again, and he's just not getting any value once that nano is get being delivered onto him by Lastro. It, it's how you phrase it as well. Yeah. So said- value. If you use the word value, you're use you're you're not talking about just about him getting showing up in the kill feed. You're showing him what he's doing once he gets that nano onto him, and I mean he's going down quickly after getting that nano. So saying, you know, he's not getting the value that, that the Valiant are hoping for, that encompasses his entire play in just one little sentence. At the same time, if if Dreamer gets the nano and doesn't find a kill, but gets out a ton of cooldowns, particularly Immortality Field or some of these big cooldowns, yep. you're getting value, even yep. though you're not getting kills. Yep. Yeah, I need to be more attentive to not, what, not just watching the kill feed. Uh and that part of that's just learning to bounce your eyes around, bounce your eyes around the screen to try to w- locate, you know, the one thing I try to do is look at the team as a shape and you can kind of, if they're bunched up, you kind of have, you know, a tight circular shape. If they're spread out, then their shape is all over the place. I referred to it as a star in, in an earlier cast today. Um, yeah. And it just helps to identify what the team is doing as a whole. Yeah, I said picks so many times this game. Not only in, in like kills picks, but like hero picks. Right. I didn't, I didn't like use the word choices or anything. I said picks for both. I, I, need, to, <laughs> I need to like at least tear them apart. <laughs> Start going in yeah, two is... picks and picket fences. Yeah. Just... Picket fences, exactly. <laughs> I got a new pick for my guitar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> No, but pick honestly, and just something that I, like I'm it. just real, really right now realizing is that they're doing a clean feed. Yes, they are. And we may or may not be doing that in the CGL. It has been discussed. But you guys are going to be able to observe in your own games. So you're going to be able to follow around the story a lot easier. Uh, having your own obs when you are doing these matches. But this is this is like advanced stuff that you're doing right now. And you're holding your own. So I want to make sure that I tell you that I'm very proud of what I'm hearing right now. Because this is your first time uh, assumed that you're going off of a clean feed. Yep, that's my first. Although I, I've done some massively like impressed, massively impressed. I concur. Wow. Others. Give him some credit too. Oh, no, yeah, I, definitely. I, I, I refer to you guys as a team. Yes. Ah, I, mean, right. I, I, I didn't pass for like a full month, and I was like, I was like, I'm gonna be so rusty. <laughs> Yeah. It, yeah. I mean, that we happens. all have it. Yeah. I, I feel like that after I don't cast for a week, like we had uh, our off season. I mean, we may be casting one thing a week. <laughs> and I felt rusty as hell. And, you know, now we're back into the grind again. And whew, treasure your off time. Let me just say that right now. <laughs> and I actually just came up with a big idea saying pick and roll. I realized that would be a great euphemism for. A wrecking ball killing someone with a uh, with a grapple hook. Yeah. Wow! I, like I mean, pick. I like it's it. not bad. It's not bad. Because you get a pick and you roll. <laughs> I feel it. I feel. <laughs> I'm feeling it. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. <with> dumb nicknames. <laughs> no, dumb nicknames are cool though. It's it gives it personality. I I, I can't fault you for that. Nothing nope. wrong with that. No. Nope. Here's your first pick and roll now. All right, all right. I'll let you have that one. I won't steal that one. I won't steal that one. Wow. <laughs> defiant are going to be defiant about that question as they will take down Lo- Logics will take down Rain, but Dreamer getting a pick on to Beast, and now the Valiant. They're the defiant ones. They're saying no. You will not cap this point. What a recontest! You had Dreamer with a huge. Uh, you could have cut that a little sooner. Yeah. Uh, I mean, as a play-by-play, you can actually leave it with just the action and allow your color caster of the room to to give the conclusion. Hmm. Uh, I mean, that that is a minute thing. I mean, we're it, it's just a minute thing of timing. Probably just didn't need the last sentence. Could have just left off yeah. the last sentence and give Awa a little more room to talk. I think I probably could have left off the sentence in the middle about the Defiant being Defiant because then the upset happened. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's that too. But... I'm already taking up from about 30 kills there. 
can do to really get on this on this temple and this map. KSP with the Bob online. Cruz has the window online as well. Yeah, Ollie, you have good things to add. I want to hear more out of you. Yep. I want to. I want to hear you sound a little more confident because you, you got to give great info to add, uh, and and just uh, uh, add a little bit more. Keep it going. Uh, you know, keep keep telling us your thoughts on it. Uh, give us give us the run on those ultimates. Tell us tell us what you like and don't like about what what they're doing going into these fights. Yeah. Uh, and when I cast with you, you feel like the great equalizer. So get in your word when you can, so you can actually equalize me because. You know, I have, you know, the big ego, big personality, and you are really, like, the guy who who's tracking the ultimates, you know, keeping everything down to earth, like, like thinking about what could realistically happen, you know, the analytic space guy. And while my big personality, so it doesn't float away, you can bring it back down to earth. I want you to get those words in, you know, because you're great. You're really, really good. Oh, yeah. wholesome. Wholesome, 100%. We're hitting 100% on the wholesome board. I like it. I like it. Hawaii. Um, okay. Hawaii. Im Im important factors here. So <laughs> there's less than two minutes on the clock. Two now, th the two minute warning. Yes. Ultimates are very important at this state. You're, you're going to get basically time. one more round of ultimates. And, and it's just worth noting. Uh, you'll also probably get, you know, two more chances. The final get two more chances at this attack. So yeah. it, it, you may get the transcendence at the very end. But I mean, it's just something, just something to keep in mind. Yeah, a hybrid and escort. I, I, I ended up mentioning two minute warning, but I forgot it. Yeah, before. check. Well, I mean, you don't necessarily want to do it every map, but just mentally keep it in mind. Two minute warning is always very important. Well, lots of ults here for the Defiant. They have three: the Gravitic Flux, the Bob, and the Amplification Matrix. They have the Bob on the other side for the Valiant, but they only have a Nano with that. Oh, wait, no. Hold on a second. Well, it depends. If they can get enough cleave damage here. And that's one of those things where you can say, you know, if Dreamer stays alive long enough in the fight, if they can stall long enough, they'll get the primal rage and be able to hang on that much longer and force it into a one-fight territory. Yeah, I felt like, once again, I was stealing his time, though, a little bit there. A little bit. A little bit. And I think, I mean, that's a two-way street. Oh, well, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta take your time. Don't respect it too much. I also think I heard, I thought I heard just a little small, little tiny throw to him here just now. Even when the fight's breaking out, I think he's trying to consciously throw it over to Awa. I, I'm, I'm digging this right now. Yeah, that's that was my thought process. Cause I was like, oh crap, I'm stealing his time. <laughs> I, I finally, it's like da 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 da, like the entire uh, Anubis. I'd accidentally been stealing his time. So, well, I was and like, oh crap, give him some time. <laughs> Uh, if we back up a little bit, so we go back to like the 140 mark where they're approaching the front door. 155, this is fine. Um, so we get a little bit from Awa here. And yeah, you know, double check the audio, making sure you're, you're coming through nice and clear. I mean, the, yeah, the mic dips a little bit out. that, but I mean that tech stuff, uh, I'm not worried about tech stuff. You'll get the tech stuff figured out. Yeah, Prod will take care of that. Uh, sometimes, but I mean, just things like adjusting your Discord, the the auto level, so making sure that it's not clipping on you and things like that will help. But that's yeah, not so much... I... Go ahead. I think, uh, like, right here, like, I can just, like, from... Like, almost like when they're setting up the fight and they're, like, rotating in the left or they're going right, I can, like, continue talking because I, I still have time Correct. to talk about. And that's, like, the past three times I wasn't really doing that, so then... It feels like chipmunks like talking a lot, so I think if we do another clean feed, I'll keep that in mind. Like, I have a lot more time because they're still setting up, and then until they actually get into the fight, he can take it play by play. Well, and precisely, and that leads into my uh, original point that I was going to make here is chipmunk. You can also ask a question. You know, if if you're wanting to talk about ults, you can guide your color caster and say what mm -hmm. ults are you looking out for in this next fight like instead of start describing the ultimates yourself pose that question to awa and and it'll encourage him to continue talking and it'll all also help guide the cast in the direction you're wanting to focus 
So you can you know, just a- ask what, you know, a one line question and then it'll encourage him to keep talking and, and kind of give him permission to keep talking until Awa gets comfortable enough to, to steal your time, which you need to do. Awa, don't respect him. Don't respect his time so much that you're, you're giving over your own. Take your time to talk. Yeah. You know, and I will ask questions of bull skunk. I will put, put, I will make him put the color hat on sometimes too. Uh, you know, especially like when we're swapping sides between a map, like say between the attack phase and defense phase, I will actually pose a question to bull skunk and make him give some analysis. It gives him a chance to take the play by play off his hat off his head for a second and let him, you know, expand upon what he's seeing. And it also will help your color con you know when you come back when you when he answers your question it gives you a different train of thought just like you're trying to provide avenues for your play-by-play uh to to go down um he can do the same thing for you it's a very dynamic uh interchangeable uh duo it certainly in your goes, cast it certainly goes both ways but in, in, mm-hmm. in this instance from what i'm saying i mean you know clearly chipmunk you're talking more and in, in this time, yeah, asking a question can certainly be a way to encourage Awa to, to take more time and to explain his thoughts more. And correct me if I'm wrong, but like the 70-30 split often flips for uh, in-between maps or in-between like uh, like attack and defense swaps, yeah? I mean, that's kind of part of the 30. Yeah, true. So, I mean, the, yeah. there's a lot like, of action I, I, in Overwatch. There's not a whole lot of downtime. Yeah, so, yeah. KSP with the Bob online. Cruz has the So just online. right there, you could have just posed a one sentence question. Lots of ults here. Giving it back to Awa. They have three. The Dravidic Flux, Bob, and. And that'll, that'll correct your timing through all this. Yeah. They have the Bob we on got, the other side. We got side a little bit valiant, off here with but they only have Right. I, give, I, I ended up giving it to Awa. Oh, as wait, the fight it's the fight's breaking out, correct? Well, so Awa should just be talking over all of this. Yeah. Like, or even a little I'm, bit of back and forth, and then now you throw it. Yeah, yeah, get it out there, Ella. Raise that voice, because I mean, you're gonna have to drown out your your play by play if you really want to get your point across. You can kind of try to interject, and then see if your play by play reacts to it, but don't do it to where it's it's um it's breaking up the stream of consciousness that your play by play is going out there. But yeah. Like right now, like right now, when you're talking, make sure that you you're talking up, man. This is where we're gonna build your confidence up. Don't let people step all over you. No, when Already. you're casting, you are the best caster on the planet. You yeah. you are the authority, and and that'll come with practice. Don't don't worry about it. Don't sweat it. Don't you worry your don't you worry your little head about that. We got you. That will come with practice. And I just have just so big of an ego, it's just not a problem for me. <laughs> <laughs> we'll work on that too, Chipmunk. <laughs> uh, uh, also, check your DMs. I'm going to give you, uh, I'm going to set you up with Ocean. Um, because we, he and I are having a, a conversation behind this, and uh, we've seen the same thing. And I want you two to work together. So I'm going to give you his uh, Twitter right now. Oh, okay. Let's keep it going. See, now, now you can see why we're only doing one map. We're an hour yeah. in, and we have extra innings to go through. <laughs> yeah. Plus, Awa, I mean, Ocean is, I, I was watching a, a Contender Trial stream for fun, and I, neither of you guys were doing it, but Ocean was doing it, and oh my god, he's freaking Pog. Ocean is yeah, he's so the, good. Very big brain. Very big brain. Massive brain. Huge. Massive brain best on ac- that guy. Best accent in esports. By far. <laughs> Best accent in Northern Ireland. I'll give him that. Yeah. Western Northern Ireland. Western Northern Ireland. Yes. Western Northern Ireland. <laughs> uh, Sorry, Ocean had to. <laughs> they pop the Bob into the back line of the Defiant, but he will be taken down quickly with that Discord orb on him. Now, this would be a perfect opportunity for them to pop the window right here in this doorway. Just have free reign over the entire Valiant squad. They're going to use the Graphitic Flux, or the Lift, as I like to call it. Not going to find any picks. In fact, the picks are in the favor of the Valiant. The Lift is going to come in for the Valiant and get more picks. It's going to be all blue in the kill feed. And now there's 40 seconds left. And to find, I mean, they do have the ults to win this. That was nice. That was nice. 
No, no, nothing really to complain about there. Um, one thing I w- will say is you could always go back and watch the actual Owl game and just see how the Owl casters handled this map. Look at when they threw, what they were talking about, what they were focusing on. Now, they're going to have a different ops, so that's going to guide the casting a little bit. But still, you can just go compare it and be like oh okay that you know the color was talking over this part when i was talking or you know they were focused on shacks more when i was focused on dreamer and there's not anything wrong with either uh but it could be just a good basis for comparison and another way to learn and also for the fact like uh oh my god i just literally forgot what i was gonna say <laughs> <laughs> well if, if you think of it let oh, me know oh uh i i remember so the other day, like, I, I think, the, to be honest, this is, sounds so stupid, but when I was just casting for the Discord, the OWL, no, the Overwatch Discord, uh, actually, Hunter was there. Me and Hunter were kind of uh, teaming up. We were both in that chat, and everyone was chill with it. That might have legit been my best uh, play-by-play casting, even though it was not formal whatsoever, just for the fact that, first of all, it was an exciting game. Second of all, for the fact that... Uh, after the game, everyone in the chat was like, dude, you were saying, like, mind you, I had the volume turned down on the actual stream, and they're like, dude, you were saying the same thing as the casters. Right. A lot of that's and, just good obs, I will say. Yeah. And, and not, and, not to oh, take any credit away from you. It's, I mean, it sounds like you did a great yeah. job. And, you know, do, do you think some of that was just because it wasn't on a stream? Did you uh, feel more relaxed about it, or was it about the same? Uh, it felt about the same. I almost felt more hype just because it was the grand finals, really. Fair. Uh, I, I get hype when it comes to big games, and my hype sure, usually you should. better casting. Uh, and uh, also, will I be like observing? Will my observer be on the screen, or will I have observers? Like, how will that whole observer thing work when it comes to the, like the season starting on November third or second or whatever? Uh, f- well, it kind of depends on if you have a third person producing or not. If it's ah. g- it, it, it depends on who your producer is. The producer will do the observing. Uh, in some cases, I mean, I don't know if, if you're comfortable with any of that. I mean, you could do that. Uh, I'm just not good at, uh, of, of observing. I'm an awful observer. I'm not going (laughs) to lie. I, and, and I, I also often ask questions to my chat, you know, after the stream, Hey, how do I work this? How do I get this to work? You know, with this Xbox controller, uh, how do I get this, you know, spectator thing working? Uh, how do I, you know, I had to go and do some re-keybinds, and then I saw the new thing, and I had to do some more keybinds, so my brain is still stuck on the old keybinds. Right. Too. Yeah, you'll uh, have to get get the men, uh, the muscle memory down for that. But do you guys also do you change like the colorblind settings like we did in my old league for like the team colors? No. No. Uh, no. No. You should run default colors and default crosshairs as well. Oh. Wait, wait, do your crosshairs, like, affect, like, the crosshair yes. on a... Yes. Yes. Oh, I did not know that. Yes. All right. The more you know. So, da, da, da. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, we'll we'll work out uh, the production situation as we get closer to time for CGL. All right. That's fine. Uh, they have a uh, I have a they question. Have a... Yeah, shoot. Uh, is, like, is contenders, is contenders Ooh. trials, are they going on right now? Uh, or are they on? Contenders Trials is the beginning of the month. So Trials for October happened last weekend. And it was epic. Who who, who qualified? Uh, I'd have to go look to be perfect. I can tell you OT Pog from EU qualified. Yeah. And, and Speedrun. Yeah, I, was, I was following and I... I know 200 MS, the whole chat at one time was saying 200 MS would get picked up by London Spitfire, but then they had some stinker games. Yeah, but I think they still qualified. I'm pretty sure they got second. I think yeah. it was 200 MS in Odyssey, if I remember correctly. Yeah. And I, think that's right. I don't remember from Group B. Oh, uh, yeah. well, you know what? Let's just. I want 200 MS to get picked up by Spitfire. I think that'd be great. We'll go, want we'll, go check it. we'll go check it when we're done with the VODs. All right, let's yeah. get let's get through Anubis let's here. Let's talk about VOD. Sorry, I'm yeah. so tired. Let's get through Anubis <laughs> here, and uh, we can go double check that. I, mean, I I cast some of those games. You think I know? But holy cow, if you could, everything kind of starts to run together. To be honest, it's why it's important to take notes. No, <laughs> don't be afraid it, to take like, notes. 
It's like if you go to the supermarket, like, one day, and then the next day you come, and you're like, hey, dude. Like, you see the same guy at the cash register, and he has no idea who you are. Yep. Because the fact, he has so much going through his head. Right, because he's seen, yeah, 200 people. He doesn't remember every single one. I mean, it's very, right. very similar. 200 MS Odyssey, Revival, and Infamous. It was Revival and Infamous. Okay, there you uh, go. Thank you, Ocean. Ocean. <laughs> Wikipedia, right here. <laughs> and we'll get two more from uh, Tournament of Champions as well. Nice. All right. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's all good. These are huge ults that, that are going to win you fights. But also, ults coming out from Valorant. They have the they have brain with the you beat you the ult and you have shocks from the duplication. Toronto kind of going to go to the slot room once again, but it hasn't really been working out for them. Let's see if they can do it this time. Not really nice. Yeah, Ten we're going to see. Really coming close, so. We're going to see the meta comp of BAP and Sen for this Defiant Squad as we have been all game, but it seems like it's working out with the Echo, no, the Anna, and the Brig much better. Now, though, the Shatter coming out from Beast and he gets shut down, but Kareev getting a pick on the KSP. He says, Widow versus Ash, I like those odds. Agility's getting a pick as he duplicates the Winston, and it goes full Primal Rage. Not something we've seen a lot, but... Now that will be a point Harper, capture. I said Judo, didn't I? Uh, four yeah, you did. Defiant there. He, they just <laughs> oh my god, sumo, I'm so like charged. pushed them out of the point. Yeah, took the they took their point. It's like this is ours now. <laughs> All right, I want to watch that. Yeah. Just like let it happen. This is I mean, ours they now. Been all... <laughs> the Anna. They have the they have brain make with tons the... of flubs this fight. You don't want any of shots. Are you on a phone? No. Allah? No, he's talking about Allah. No, no, Allah. Are you? Were you uh, casting off of? Of a... <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Your mic actually cut out as you His said that. His mic actually <laughs> cut out as he said that. Wow. wow. I think I have a terrible. <laughs> Did we lose him for real? Uh, no. Am I here? Can yeah. You, you are now. Yes. <laughs> well, oh I, I like terrible internet because i like live on a hill in the middle of like nowhere and then my mic's pretty old so i'm but i might get a new mic especially if like i do my casting i i have a wi-fi extender in my room because it's in like my my pc's in a loft bed and it's like my wi-fi's on the other side of the house so i actually have a wi-fi extender in my room nice. that boosts the wi-fi power so i can do this without any <laughs> latency yeah, I run a cord across my house, so I'm hardwired. But I do. I have a cord just like ran across my house. Yeah, the Ethernet cord. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, I just I got hardwired in my new room this morning, so yeah. I, I I had that set up for a while, but eventually we we're like, all right, we'll just go wireless with a Wi-Fi extender in my room. You know. I would definitely invest in a new headset at least. Um, and I, I know that you're uh, a teenager, so that might not be easy to do, but that should be something to be looking forward to in the near future. Um, I actually have a suggestion for that. The mic I have now, Avankyo, actually pretty cheap. My brother, no, my brother, no joke, with promo codes, bought one of these headsets with once again a fantastic mic, uh, for fourteen dollars with with like coupon codes and stuff. No joke, and it was kind of I got this one without the coupon codes for like thirty five dollars, like but it's these ones are cheaper than Turtle Beach. They last longer and they have a better mic. So y'all can figure that out afterwards, but yes, it, was, it is. It was just, a, it was a question. Well, yeah. it, and we're not really focused on technical stuff for, uh, these, you know, these VOD reviews, but it, it is okay. important to have good tools. So if you do get a chance, it would be worth, you know, if you're wanting to do this more, it would be worth investing in a better quality mic. I will say, cause I am, I am struggling to hear you. It's one of the reasons I wanted to back this up because I wanted to go back all and listen to what you were saying there. Cause I was, I was liking what I was hearing, but I wanted to go back and, and make sure I caught everything. And yeah, it, you like, know, just a better quality mic might help with that. It could be an yeah. internet connection thing too. Um, but all right, let's let's go let's go through this again. Toronto is going to go to the slot room once again, but it hasn't really been working out for them. Let's see if they can do it this time. Not really nice. Yeah, Ten we're gonna see. Really coming close, so. We're gonna see the meta comp of BAP and Sen for this Defiant Squad as we have been all game, but it seems like it's working out with the Echo, no, the Anna and the Brig much better. 
Now, though, the shatter coming out from Beast, and he gets shuts down, but Kareev getting a pick on the KSP. He says, Widow versus Ash. I like those odds. Agility's getting a pick as he duplicates God, the Winston. I cringe every time I hear it. And it goes full primal rage. Not something we've seen a lot, but tired. now that will be a point capture uh, for Defiant there. he They just full sumo like push them out of the point that was a bit of a c9 but you know. they took their point it's like this is ours now we had a c9 <laughs> earlier so we didn't want to just seem like, like the people who just call we everything a c9 a bit. I mean, agreed to play no i wouldn't have called it a c9 was i was just saying that was a bit of a c9 valiant was like winning that fight, the fight there was a certified fight. charlie niner on uh really mecha good, base really yeah the the ball just literally rolled off the point valiant also has five minutes to just get one capture point on point A. And if they can do what they did in the first round, this is looking like an easy map win for Valor. Yeah, and if they if they take this, well, you know, Defiant... Two, two up. Yeah. No it's going to be rough for the Defiant. <laughs> They're, it's going to be really hard for them to, to try and bring it back because you get so mentally boomed. After, yeah. you know, losing two straight, not only that, but giving up a five-minute time bank, pretty much, to the Valiant. Uh, I like that. I like that. You're talking about the stakes. That's really good. Talk about the fact if they go down here, they're going down 2-0, and, and then transitioning uh, from that all into Chinlock, mm -hmm. talking about the mentality of a team being down 0-2. Uh, that, that's really nice, because uh, you kind of give a little bit of insight into what the players could be thinking or feeling. Anytime you get a chance to do that, take advantage of it. I really like that. And now we finally have KSP versus Logix. I like those odds. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> when you thought, you know, your team had the hopes, and all of a sudden, you know, you're you're fighting for your life for one tick with five minutes. Like that is going to be a hard ask. And let's just see if they can fulfill. Uh, Valiant are going to be on the attack. Defiant are going to be on the defense. Uh, same compositions, really, except we're going to see KSP on the first point going to Widow. Maybe switching off here? Is he? Biggest change was the Defiant support line. Just an Wait, FYI. Did they change? Yeah. They oh, went they off did. to Zen Baptiste onto the Brig oh. on a, Yeah. That, that uh, we, we probably could transition from, like, you, you were saying we did a good job of, like, uh, saying, like, the fatigue and, like, the match and everything. It could... Could you gone more towards like comp defiance composition, like more into the defense? Yeah, yeah exactly. Right after For talking sure. about the mentality, start talking about their comp. That would have fed into that nicely. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You're getting it. Yeah. You're getting it. And if there was a junk yeah. on the other team, I would totally love to say mentally boomed. Like, <laughs> over and over. Don't overdo the puns now. I mean, I appreciate <laughs> I your sense of humor. I know. I know Don't I know. overdo the puns. I know. Hey, that's coming from me, all right? Like, that's a big statement. <laughs> Yeah. You like your lesson that currently? I, I like my puns. I like my puns. What can I say? Uh, I like my puns, my rhymes, and my alliteration. What can I say? <laughs> <laughs> but you can't yeah. overdo it. Otherwise, it gets gimmicky. And you want it yeah. to be, you want it to have personality and, and uh, some humor, but you don't want it to be cheesy, right? That's a fine line. Mm. I mean, you yeah, we, had, we, we had a game with a guy named Dizzy Work, and I said about five times Dizzy Work making busy work. It's good once. So, yeah, I said it like five times. It was stupid. Yeah, yeah, it's good once. Twice you're kind of go, eh, you already used that one. After that, it's gonna get, it's gonna turn uh, into cheese. Yeah, maybe three times, but either uh, way, either way, it sucked. <laughs> no, nah, but but yeah, you, you're understanding. You're understanding. You get a pick or two. True. KSP has have... the upside. Jackson and Agility is fighting in the sky. They're both looking for picks. Uh-oh, KSP is on the ground looking for a pick from via the angle on Agility. It's a Widow versus an Ash, which usually lends itself to the Widow because of the fact there that... There we go, I finally get it in. Widow yep. out damages the Ash. You know, one headshot from the Widow will just take down the Ash. But now they're going to push in here. Valiant are going to start looking for these picks, but they're going to take their sweet time. And see, and really, all of this can be color space. Because mm. yeah, it's just, it's just poke. Yeah, exactly. It's just poke. Right 
I really did like the the comment about the widow versus the ash. You're talking about matchups, and anytime you can talk about the interaction between the two players or or the cooldowns or the ultimates, you're, that's a good thing. So keep keep doing that. That was very good. Uh, but uh, as far as timing, I mean, it could have been Awa talking about that, or just immediately throw it and let him set up a little bit before this fight breaks out. Mm. Uh, uh, I have to go to some friends over. So, um, thank you for doing the the Twitch cast and everything. And I like what you guys helped me out with. So, and you I think watch next. The later. Yeah, I'll finish it up. Yeah, so, no worries, man. No, just... Go do your thing. Thanks for joining See us. Yeah, uh... I, I appreciate you, you letting us do this. It, it helps us all to learn. So, and. You've got a lot yeah. of potential, my friend. Just uh, keep practicing, and I'm, I'm anxious to hear more from you. Aloha, Awa. Adios. KSP, pretty big there, trying to flank, and now Logic's taking down Dreamer. Shaq's going down as well, and that will be this push for the Valiant. It draws by agility, seeing that he can die with the Widow. And you're going to see KSP switch off of the Widow onto the Ash. Oh, so uh, good. Dreamer switching off the ball onto the Mystic. So a little bit more, but they were playing the first time on their first attack. Yeah, the ball is not going to be nearly as useful uh, to Nano as the Winston. That may be why, because Lastro has the Nano Boost online. Agility has the duplicate. Nevix, though, with the hypersphere is taken down. It's Shax. And now, well, it's just going to be another stop here. Another stopping in that long five minute time bank. But the Valiant are going to have to wait for a member of their team to get back. Uh, one thing I will say, and again, I feel like I'm getting into details I was not expecting to get into, getting into to a little bit more advanced stuff. But try to stay active with your verbs. Um, I mean, this is coming straight from English class type of type of deal, but as opposed to saying are going or is happening, you, instead of, you know, Valiant has, uh, how did you phrase it? Are, are going to have less time on the clock, I think is how it was phrased. You can say Defiant took more of that time off the clock and it just gives it more power. It gives it more weight. Does that make sense? Yeah, I yeah, I think I said a stoppage or something. Right. Like, yeah, that doesn't give as much power. That that reminds me of plumbing. Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, it's it's really trying to eliminate B, is, R, and you're going to have to put them in at some point. But if you can use what, what are called active verbs, and it's, you know, defiant, defiant stopped or, you know, defiant took that time off the clock, it just sounds stronger than valiant are going to have less time on the clock. You're, they mean the same word. thing. But it just gives strength to Defiance actions and, and a little bit more power to the cast. I mean, but again, a, a fairly advanced thing that, uh, well, frankly, I, I wasn't aware of at, when I was at your stage of casting. You're, you're ahead of me, that's for sure. Well, I watched, let's just say I watched a lot of OWL. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, me too. Me too. That's good, though. That's good. It is. Yeah. Absorb it all. I also played Overwatch like a, uh, in the old league I was in. I played on for three teams. So nice. So I, I do have that a little bit. So did all was currently on a team actually. Oh yeah, I mean just knowing the ins and outs, knowing the player mindset helps a lot. Oh, he also knows the coach mindset. He he's a coach for the team called the Pachamaris. Okay. Yeah. No, that can certainly help a lot. I mean, there's a reason. You know, like Jake has turned into such a good caster. He's got that that inside mindset of what it's like to sit in the chair and have that headset on and be a part of that team. Yeah, Jake and I'm telling you, Jake and CB is is they're underrated, man. They're some great casters. They they they're very good. Jake started. I mean, the first half of the season he was a little rough, but yeah. he's really grown uh, into His it. Solo carry grown him grew grew him into a man. Yeah, he but he's he really grown into carry. it. Jake has turned into a fantastic caster. I agree with that. Going for. Picks. That is beautiful. Shaq's gonna go down here, and now, well, we're closing in on 45 seconds till the two-minute warning when it starts to get a lot harder. Oh my! Logic. <laughs> Just uh, that was absolutely filthy. Logic. He can hit the shots. I like it. 
I the love it. I live for, dude. Used to be a, uh, oh, yeah. Shot or shot or KSP ass shot, dude, all day long. Yeah. It happens to me all the time, uh, Chipmunk. I will be giving analysis in between, and something will happen, and I'll just stop because I'm just, my breath is taken away, and Bullskunk knows, already knows that I'm not going to be able to speak for three seconds. So he goes ahead and takes the space. <laughs> Ocean. <laughs> uh. <laughs> <laughs> My sly smile on that height cast made Ocean happy, apparently. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> uh, but Ocean also makes a good point here, and I think this applies to casting as well as playing, uh, is staying proactive rather than reactive. And it keeps you a step ahead of the curve. And I think that's that's a really good way to put it. Stay proactive rather than reactive. I like that a yeah, lot. Yeah, I... I... I did that earlier, and it, it and it usually works out, you know, for me. But I accidentally flopped it earlier when I was saying that Dreamer was gonna go for some cleave, and then he just backed out instead. Uh, but usually, yeah, it ends up working out for me. Well, I mean, that's that just, I, I that didn't mind that because you weren't wrong. You're never wrong. Dreamer just All opted right. for a different approach. They just did All something right. that you weren't expecting. You were expecting him to go ahead and get aggressive, and he decided that it wasn't quite the time yet. You know, I mean, like, that's... Neither were wrong. All right, fair enough. By Saya player on the Florida Mayhem last year. Got to show some of his stuff. Defiant were, were pleased with it. They picked him up, and it's turning out quite well. He's one of the stud muffin Ash players in this league. Frankly, hit scan players. The Graphitic Flux coming in for the Defiant. Nevix has been doing really well this entire game. The Nano Boost on the Dreamer looking for picks, but it seems like it's only going to go to him for the Old Charge. The Sleep on the Dreamer is absolutely ridiculous. What great accuracy from the veteran player, Kareev. Lastro going to go down as well as the rest of the Valiant. And there's a minute and 40 left. The Defiant can actually Audible do gasp. this. What's that? I said, I just said audible gasp. Yeah. <laughs> uh, don't get too hung up on one thing. There was still good action going on inside because of that sleep. There's, you know, there wasn't as much shielding to protect against the shatter. So it was defiant. We're able to utilize that sleep to win that fight. Once again, wait, there was a shatter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that, and that's, I think you may be getting a little too focused in on singular plays. Like keep it rolling. Keep, all right. Keep keep the brain rolling. Stay in the fight, and, and that was a great pickup. And that sleep was important. I, I can't believe I caught that on OBS, to be honest. Um, but it was why it was important is because it allowed Beast to get that shatter in. There, are, you know, it assisted in Beast getting that shatter in because there wasn't a Winston there trying to bubble. And they caught it on the OBS because they nano Dreamer, but then the nano wore off. He jumped onto the high ground, yep. and as he jumped up there, he got slept. Yeah. Frankly, they probably should have switched over to Beast at that time, but they didn't. I did. Thank you very much. Oh, wait. You did? I did. Oh, all right. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm doing this. I am the obs on this. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. I thought this was like the podcast. No, I made this. How do you get the... Oh, how do you do that? Oh, it's because you you worked with uh, Charles, right? No, not at all. It's the replay viewer. You just go, oh, go grab the Overwatch replay viewer and you can go plug a controller into your computer and just go practice observing. And Where that's you find uh, the codes for the games. They're not codes. You have to it's for Overwatch PC. There's also the Overwatch replay viewer available and they post the Overwatch League games in there. You can just go click on oh. one and pull it up and go watch it. And you have wow. you have full reign over everything. All your controls work the same. So this this was actually to do OBS practice was the kind of the original reason I did this was just to practice my observing, but I put it on my YouTube specifically for this, for practice casting. But the original idea was to practice my observing. Wow. All right. So yeah, I, cool. I am the obs on all of this. All right. Only you suck. No, I'm joking. The old charge, the sleep on the dreamer. See, there you go. On to beast. There we go. Ridiculous. There we go. Yeah. Beast was shattered. Right Boom. From the was veteran shattered there. player, Kareev. Lastro gonna go down as well as the rest of the Valiant, and there's a minute and 40 left. The Defiant can actually do this. Yeah, but Defiant popped a lot ults in that last fight, and yeah. Valiant That's really only has to win one, so this is a perfect time for Valiant to pop out the duplication this fight, when especially with Rain having him so long -like. Yeah, keep encouraging Awa. He needs to come out of it, out of his shell a little bit, because I mean he's that, was, that was that was a perfect call. Yeah. He's absolutely, he's 100% right. 
I was I was literally watching this and I was thinking, oh man, I should probably should have called out that they were low on ults and that all no, no. comes in and picks it up. That's that's and the color's like, job. Yeah, that's exactly. the color's job. Exactly. And and he he picked up on that beautifully. He's got he's got wonderful things to add. He just needs to come out of his shell a little bit. So I mean, just just keep encouraging him and and he'll get stronger. Uh, but that was that was the perfect call. He's right. Val, this is Valiant's best chance. Yep. Uh, I don't think I'm that worried for the Valiant. They still have this in the bag. All Let's right, do a with this They do have the Reinhardt, which is a much better duplicate target than, say, a Sigma. Uh, I think it'd be hilarious if you could duplicate an Echo. But that is not part of her character kit. Now they're looking for the pick. The pressure on the Beast, maybe too much. They pressure... Oh, no! They missed the duplicate! That is absolutely crucial! Now he's on Brig, but it doesn't matter! Dreamer just smacking them into the corner with the Primal Rage, and that will be it! The Los Angeles Valiant will take Temple of Anubis and go up 2-0 and hopefully bring it to Trace. That was a really good game. The Defiant showed really good control and really good defense. And the, the I'd have to agree. That was a good game. Yeah, it was a pretty fun one to do. Uh, Ocean, what are you referring to? WTF, yeah, why? What What were you referring to? I'm sorry, I just saw that. Wait, Beast, Beast just jumped before Slam. That's some plat shit, yeah. E uh, yeah. Okay, you're, you're talking about what Beast did. I see. Ocean just too big brain for us. No, I just wasn't. I wasn't sure the context of what he was meaning, but he was talking uh, about Beast's choice, I believe, to to jump up onto the high ground before uh, before Shatter came out. You mean uh, Dreamer's choice? Oh yeah, fair. I did mean Dreamer's choice. So wait, what were you talking about with Beast jumped before Slam? Oh, just the fact that he leapt before he threw our Shatter. <laughs> <laughs> given time because oh, it, it gives he's, extra time to react to it he's yeah that is true but that is an incredibly niche thing which i think is important for sure but, oh no, I mean, ocean I, will pick up on those micro plays o ocean is just too big brain for all of us i mean he's just <laughs> ascended he's ascended to the next level of just human beingness uh, he's not even a human anymore. Don't he's don't just like... don't inflate his ego anymore. He did, he he don't. Don't, don't, don't inflate his ego. <laughs> Good lord, no! <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, Be he's Beast... gonna be insufferable now. Thanks, Shivam. <laughs> Thanks so much. Uh, no, Beast oh did. He did. He did. If you leap before Shatter, you make the the vocal line and give yeah. your give your opponent extra time to react to it. So it is. It, it is, is a bit of a plat move, but it, that is a micro. It is definitely a micro play. You know what? There's a reason uh, I believe Beast got benched for um, um, Numlocked re late in the season. Yeah. That's because he, was, he was playing like a plat Reinhardt Beast. I'd say it was, the, it was the Leaping Shatters. The Leaping Shatters got him benched. No, no, yeah, exactly. But he honestly performed very well on the uh, Winston later. He brought this back for the... He brought this to five maps for the Defiant, I think. If they would have won, Beast would have gotten MVP because of the fact that he really turned it around, went on to Winston, and uh, kind of pogged out. Well, I hope we we gave you some things to work on. For sure. Um, I'm, I'm anxious to see you grow. You've got a, you've got a lot of talent, man. And uh, I'm, I'm very impressed, and I'm anxious to see you cast some CGL and, and keep growing and keep getting better. And Don't some underestimate us kids, man. Never, 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 <laughs> never. There's a reason why I signed you. Uh, and ah. no, no, it's and underestimating has nothing to do with age. It's just experience. Yeah. It has nothing to do with I how old potential. you are. It's just how much casting you've done. Because there's just well, I mean, some things you just have to you just have to practice and grind it out to get better at it. So that would yeah. be the only thing if I was going to say is it had nothing to do with age. It was just on the the newness. Ah. Uh. Yeah, I've been casting for like six months at this point. Although I had a brain for casting and I wanted to be a sports caster, I had a really momentous, like life occasion involving acting that made me really want to be an actor. But then I, I, I just came back to what I want to do before that, and I was to become a sports caster. Awesome. And the first moment of me realizing not only do I like to do it, but I actually have some skill in it is I was watching football and a player named Marshawn Lattimore, a corner for the uh, Saints. Mm -hmm. uh, he got injured. It looked like he was holding his head. And I was like, oh, that was Marshawn Lattimore, last year's Defensive Rookie of the Year. Uh, and then as soon as I say that, then Al Michaels says, 
Oh, and that's Marshawn Lattimore's la- last year's rookie of the uh, defensive rookie of the year. Nice, <laughs> dude. And I was like, Al Michaels me? might be the like greatest caster of, of, of you know, uh, that's currently uh, casting. Uh, casting. I mean, yeah, he's probably one of the greatest. Although personally, my favorite duo is Joe Buck and uh, Troy Aikman. And Troy Aikman, you know sure. Those are? Those are just opinions, you know. Although Joe Buck recently won the uh, Pete Rozelle Award. I was watching football when he won that uh, on Sunday night, I believe week two this season. Yeah, I'm a uh, I'm I'm born and raised in Dallas, so I'm a Cowboys fan. So I, I like hey. I like Troy Aikman as a as a caster for sure. I thought Tony yeah. Romo was actually a very good caster as well. He still is. Yeah. Uh, uh, let's see. Ocean saying uh, these two casters down. have. Vincent, thank you for the follow. So these two casters have given me hope. Chipmunk giving me some basic vibes and, and a person basic, <laughs> not, you know, like simple basic. <laughs> not meaning simple, but meaning the person basic. You're a simp. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, and that is a very big compliment. Uh, Awa with confidence will be able to show their intelligence. And I enjoyed this. Uh, Ocean, I agree 100%. I agree 100%. He also said he started in acting as well, so. Oh my gosh, wow. Yeah, I had a, I had a really big acting thing. I was not going to elaborate on it. Only the plus press releases came out, but, and also this is online, so I like to keep like, my personal stuff anonymous. Of course. Uh, no, obviously, no. Once, my, once I start casting with a webcam, obviously that kind of will go out the window, but. I mean, uh, <laughs> the idea is to get your name out there. I was having this conversation with the production crew earlier. It's like, I wouldn't mind putting our real names up. I mean, that's the whole point is putting is getting your name out there. So. Yeah, and once the actual release of the, the film comes out, I'd be fine with it. You know, it's just right, right. now. No, I understand. You know, only the press releases come out. So I'm trying to keep everything about my name and personality pretty confidential. I'm fine with it afterwards. Uh, oh, sure. Well, well good know. luck, my friend. That's, uh, I mean, you can tell you're, you're comfortable. I left you out of this story. What story? <laughs> what what story <laughs> i mean I've been oh yeah ocean yes yeah, so ocean was there when we were having this conversation it was when me and ocean were casting so oh yeah 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 look see see what you did chipmunk you gave him a big head that's i blame you entirely <laughs> chipmunk wow <laughs> <laughs> yes ocean you were there for that conversation about using our real names <laughs> you don't gur uh, at me don't gur at me billy thank you for very, subbing see again. now he started it damn it <laughs> uh, my freaking discord's gonna be blowing up all night go to bed ocean it's freaking like four in the morning or two in the morning there well speaking of go to bed we'll go ahead and call it a quits here on this caster class thank you once again for your submission chipmunk appreciate you putting yourself out right. there and letting us okay. analyze also, it a fair bit of advice to any people who aren't in the cgl but want to be in the cgl who oh. happen to watch this by some sheer thing of luck do improv comedy it helps a lot because you have to learn to think on your feet That's there you all go I gotta say. yeah Rawr. good advice yeah. Good I've advice. Been doing it for three years, and, and so I, it's I just, even though sometimes it may be wrong, I think of things on the spot. <laughs> Billy, thank you for this, uh, man. I really appreciate it. That's huge. It's it's on auto now, so I mean I don't even have to worry about thinking about it. <laughs> no, I really appreciate it. Seriously, no seriously, effort. no effort required. It's the best uh, way. <laughs> all right. Uh, I did want to say uh, we had a submission. Let me go. Uh, we had a submission from Chabuba. Unfortunately, Chababa. Chababa? Dude. Yes. Yeah, he's my dude. He was on a, he was on a uh, OPA team with me way back when I played. He was me and him were on the Senti Dynasty. Both of us were off tank. So shout out to my guy Chababa. Well, he put in a Vatsa mission, but unfortunately the Twitch link had expired, so I wasn't able wasn't able to take a look at it. Uh, but please, please submit another one. I'm, I'm anxious to see your cast. I'd be happy to review it. Uh, if you hear this, please, please submit another one. Um, cause I, I want to take a look at it. I was going to do both today, but unfortunately yeah, it had expired. But with that said, we'll go ahead and call it a night. Billy, thank you for joining me as always. Always better to do this with friends and, uh, yeah, y'all have a good night. We'll see you next week for some more caster class. Night, night, everyone. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to Bo Scott and follow and do all that. Yay. What he said. <laughs>